Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's residential ruckus. Apartment 1155. As a child, my family was broke because both my parents were unemployed and we were all forced to stay at our aunt's house. Eventually, my mom was finally able to get a job and we bought a small two-bedroom apartment at some small complex called Lake Heart Apartments. It stayed true to its name. It had a murky, filthy lake at the center with a bridge coming across. We lived right by it. The apartment number was 1155. How catchy. It took about two months to get all settled. My sister and I had to share a bedroom, which clashed horribly because I was a boy, she was a girl, eh, you know how it works. Mind you, I was six at the time and I believed in cooties. I almost never got any sleep because she would tell me these creepy old tales that <sighs> scared the tish out of me. And she forced me to sleep on the bottom bunk, which we found a huge cockroach hiding in shortly after getting here. She always took up all the good things and made me get into trouble for things that I didn't do. One night, after a long day of school, I returned to my house to find my sister asleep on the couch. This was a huge relief to me. I wouldn't have to deal with her crap for an entire afternoon. So I went into the bedroom and I started dicking around with her things. About two more hours passed before I started to get bored. As if on cue, my sister barged in and said, Mom just called me and told me she's working late and she won't be back till 12. This means we have the entire apartment to ourselves. Now, that was a pretty big thing for us. We were rarely left at home after 8 p.m. Even if I was left with my sister, I was excited to be at home without any kind of parental supervision. It was about 10 p.m. when my sister finally passed out and I was falling asleep as well. I heard the sound of footsteps in the hall. Oh, I thought mom must be home early. But the footsteps became louder and louder. And then I heard the door open. I faked being asleep just to see what her reaction would be. I heard a murmur and instead of a kiss on the forehead, I felt hot, stinking air. It was almost as if someone or something was breathing on me. I tried hard not to tense up as whatever it was sniffed around my face and laid its talons on my chest. Luckily, it lost interest in me quickly. I peeked an eye open only to see the thing slither up the ladder to my sister's resting body. Oh no. Even if I hated her, she was my flesh and blood and I begged God to protect her from that thing. After a few minutes, it must have realized that she was asleep too. I snuck a quick peek at the thing and withheld a scream. It stood up on all fours, using long, heavy legs to hold itself there. It had a body that was completely skin and bone and teeth protruded out of its mouth and it had gray eyes and just bone white skin. I stood up in bed and at that point it must have noticed because it whipped its head around toward me and it opened its mouth and began to speak in a raspy low hum. What are you doing awake, darling? Well, I don't know about you, but I always considered my family monsters. Then again, I'm crazy. Stay scary, my wildlings, and make the most of your nights. <laughs>